as usual, as we move through more and more advanced topics, we find that we discover older pieces of information that just aren't there anymore in our minds. So here's an example where you've had probably multiple situations where you've utilized polar coordinates or polar equations, but you may not have quick and ready access to being able to do quick conversions. So I'm going to provide just a few examples and then I have a handout for my students which will have a number of other written examples, but for video's sake, this is probably the one time where I'm just gonna go through a, a two sets of common types of equations to convert. Um, first, if we have a point in the xy plane, um, we have some basic conversions that we have used many times before. X is R multiplied by the cosine of the angle and y is r multiplied by the sine of the angle. And of course, we know that x squared plus y squared equals r squared by the Pythagorean theorem. And a lesser used, but we'll, we'll, we'll pull it up once here, um, a formula is that the tangent of the theta is the opposite leg over the adjacent leg. Now, let's put these to work. We're gonna convert from rectangular, the X and Y world, to polar. And that's all I'm gonna do in this set of videos is convert from rectangular to polar. Most of the time, our objective will be to solve it for R equals, but you will find that that's not 100% possible every time. So, first example, Y equals three, x and y axis, so y equals 3 would be horizontal line, 3 units up. Replace y with r multiplied by sine of theta, and then divide by sine of theta, and we get r equals 3 divided by sine of theta. Now for the moral dilemma, which do you like less? Do you just dislike fractions? So three over sine theta is not good? If that's the case, you could write this as three times the cosecant of theta. Or do you dislike cosecant more? You can write it either way, three divided by sine or three times cosecant. The textbook and I will generally write it this way because it takes less space, but this is a perfectly acceptable um, conversion. What about a vertical line? Two units to the right. This is not a function in the xy world, but r cosine of theta is two. r equals two divided by cosine of theta, which is two multiplied by secant of theta. This is a function in the world of polar because for every theta you get only one value of r that comes out. So those are two pretty simple lines. Now, let's do a more interesting line. It's not fancy, but it is going to be more interesting. x and y. So y equals x. If we attempt to use the same conversion formulas, r sine of theta is equal to r cosine of theta, we could do several pitfalls here, but let me show you a common pitfall. If I divide both sides by r, I get sine of theta equals cosine of theta. It's now not possible to solve for r equals. There is no R. There is a way to salvage this, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you that the nature of this equation is both uh, not possible to solve for R, but that is not a disadvantage to us when we're going to use it for integration. Let me go back to here. 
if I divide both sides by x, um, tangent of theta is equal to y divided by x. And when is the tangent theta equal to 1? Well, there are infinitely many correct answers, but the first convenient one would be theta is pi over 4. And it turns out that this is the equation of the line that we care about. We're actually interested in naming the angle. Notice what's missing? R is not there. So R could be positive or negative, but theta is pi divided by 4. Now, besides some basic lines, we're going to also look at um, some circles. Just two. Again, I'm trying to keep this brief, but highlighting some of the conversions you're going to use most frequently. x squared plus y squared equals... What shall we use here? 16, maybe? But x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. And we take the square root of 16. There are two roots, a positive or negative 4. We're going to just use the positive to identify this circle. Ooh, that almost looks like a circle. Nice. That would represent this circle here, just the circle itself. I just shaded it because I guess I felt like it. One more conversion. All right, one more conversion for this video. I'm going to give it to you in algebra. That circle. centered at 3, 0, and has a radius of 3. You could say it's tangent to the y-axis at the origin. Um, it's centered to the right. We're going to do a little polar conversion here. Um, a little bit of multiplication, x squared minus 6x plus 9 plus y squared equals 9. Uh, subtract 9 from both sides. And I'm going to add the 6x. x squared plus y squared equals 6x. Um, it would be fair to ask how come I did that, but I'm just going to do one more step to, to find out. x squared plus y squared is r squared. And x is r multiplied by the cosine of theta. And this could get you into trouble dividing by a variable. But if I'm going to divide both sides by r, r equals 6 cosine of theta represents that circle. Its radius isn't 6. But if theta is 0, cosine of 0 is 1, and 1 times 6 is 6, that would be representing this point here. If theta is pi divided by 2, cosine of pi over 2 is 0. 0 times 6 is 0. That would be this point right here. If I were to evaluate at pi over 4, I would get 6 root 2 over 2, which is 3 root 2. I think we would find that at 45 degrees, that takes us, there's your 3 root 2 distance right there. That would take us to the point at the top of the circle. And here's a little interesting fact. In 90 degrees, we traversed half of the circle. If you wanted to see the entire circle, the best... Um, for our future purposes, way of writing this would be for theta to vary between these two values, negative and positive pi over 2. 
But I'm going to leave that with a question mark and fun for you to look at. Again, I'm going to post some additional problems to practice converting because we're going to be doing a fair number of problems going from the XY world into the polar world. There you have it.